talking about Jazzy McBeal. Streets 94.5 is the number one station in the streets. Of course, I like to call this Intimate with Iggy. Can, can we say it oh, like I that? I like that, yes. <laughs> I'm all for a good title. Yes, how are you? I'm good. I'm happy now the sun's come out. Absolutely, absolutely. This is my first time meeting you, actually. A lot of times when I when I see you, I see you on the blogs, but, you know, yes. I just like she's still such a, a beautiful, a beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. And I definitely have to say congratulations first on your the first album going finally going i know platinum. finally i know i was like is it ever gonna happen for me but i know it's like i said better late than never absolutely so i'll be waiting for my plaque in the mail <laughs> <laughs> so two years did you expect it to even go did you give up because like i said it's been two years yeah i know i kind of well it got like very bootlegged it's one it was one <laughs> of the most illegally downloaded albums of the year so of that year so i was like well, I'm glad you guys listen, but yeah, yeah. now I don't have any certification. But it's okay. Yeah. I said earlier today, I was like, I think it's my bad karma because I lime wired and naps did so much. I know, me too. <laughs> me too. I know yeah. too. So now everyone's like bootlegging my stuff, but it's all right. Yeah, I'm happy. I didn't really like, I wasn't really checking for it to do okay. anything anymore because it's kind of old. So it's just mm -hmm. a nice surprise yesterday. Okay, nice. Yeah. It's always the unexpected blessings. Yeah, happen, exactly. Right? So let me ask you one question. Were you, you and T.I. situation, were you ever signed to Grand Hustle, ever signed to T.I.? or? Uh, well, I'm signed to Grand Hustle's publishing okay. company, okay. and I still am, um, but n not to the, like, record label. label. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. So he does my publishing even still, so any, like, song that I have that comes out, um, those guys go out there and they get it synced, they get it in commercials or on okay. television shows okay. and that's what they do and then they c of course collect my publishing from all my streams and everything like that. So that's uh, like the business side of things that TI handles, not necessarily the creative like artist okay. or creating of an album, which I think people, I mean we never really clarified what exactly it was but right. that is officially what it was and always has been right um as well as of course he's just like family so i would go on mixtapes and all that kind of thing even though i'm not officially signed to the label part of things right, but, yeah. right. so do you consider yourself as a, a hip-hop artist or a pop artist like uh, do, you put yourself on in one lane? <laughs> do you do you put yourself in to. one lane uh, I don't really put myself in one lane. Okay. I don't know. Like, I grew up liking both, uh, or all kinds of music, mm -hmm. really. And I think a lot of artists are just a fan of music. And I don't really... Some songs I make, I think I'm more rap-sounding or more hip-hop influenced. Mm -hmm. And other things have more of a pop influence. And some things, I think, would fit in the format mm -hmm. and could play with other rappers' songs. And some stuff would just, I think, sound totally out of place and way mm -hmm. too pop. So I don't know. I mean, in terms of me, like ever going out and doing a show where like Rick Ross is coming on afterwards. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think we like really fit in the same category if that's what you consider hip hop to be. I'm mm -hmm. definitely too pop um, when you look at things as a collective, okay. but I'm definitely rap influenced and I am a rapper, right. but I just try to mesh things because I come from a mesh of different mm -hmm. musical background. Um, so yeah. Now, do you think it, it, it kind of like confuses people like when you go pop and then you go hip hop and it's like, okay, does, does this girl really know what she wants to do or be? Because um, sometimes like the hip hop culture is kind of like, okay, well, what, you know, she's this you know, white girl. It's only like, if you feel like you have to choose. I mean, for me, I don't feel like I have okay. to pick. So it's not like anytime I take a step out of one style and into another. It's not really me trying to see what fits. It's just mm. me. I love to experiment with music. Some things I like to be more electronically influenced. Some things yeah. more pop, hip-hop, whatever. Mm. Um, so it's just like whatever I feel on the day when I'm going into making the record. I never like sit down and think, oh, I want to make something really rap right. or I want to make something for the pop charts. I don't know. Yeah. I think I understand why other people want to categorize things, but I don't really like subscribe to one particular style. Right. I like that. Okay, and you're originally from Australia, right? Yes. So when you, let's go back to the history of things. How did you get discovered by T.I.? Like, were you really, really big and known over in Australia as a... No, like a I was here. I had a buzz going here, and I had just been on the cover of the XXL mm -hmm. Freshman cover, um, and I was on the 2012, I think, same cover that Future was on, mm -hmm. and French Montana, all those guys. So I was on the cover of that, and... Um, Tip had kind of like heard my music maybe a little before that or we had shot the cover but it hadn't came out and mm -hmm. he had like heard about everything 
and he got in touch with my manager and that's when I met him. So I kind of already had the mixtape and like a bit of a buzz online. Um, that he's like really good though. He like really gets out there even still mm -hmm. and like tries to find artists and mm -hmm. he found Travis Scott mm -hmm. at the same time and I didn't even know who Travis Scott was. Yeah. So like he's like out he's a hustler. He's, he's like out hustler. there looking all the time. Right. Yeah. Right. Now remember T I said in an interview that um he had to cut ties with you. Well, he um, said he had to take a step away, not cut a, ties. Yeah. Well, yeah, take a step <laughs> away from you. Which I think people thought meant cut ties, yeah. but we've never cut ties. Obviously, we're in business together, yeah. so that would be a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Like, how would we yeah. do any business right. <laughs> and but not talk? Well, I think what he meant by that, and he did clarify after, but of mm -hmm. course, when you do clarify, you, that's not that interesting. It's like usually... Right, you hear the first thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, it, and it's like, oh, he clarified. Like, footnote um the thing is like tip he's an awesome guy and of course he's been my mentor so that comes with giving advice as you'd expect a mentor to give and i just kind of felt like for me um he kind of approached it as giving like business advice and it was because this is my career after all but i took the whole situation and everything that i was going through as more of a personal matter mm. and i just felt like i appreciate the advice but I kind of have to put my own hand in the fire and see if it's hot because that's just, you You have to, just like when your mama tells you, don't yeah. stay away from that boy and you, and yeah, you still yeah. have to. Yeah. And, and so that's what it was with Tip. He <laughs> just was kind of, and by take a step back, I feel like he was just like, I need to take a step back and let her do her own thing and figure it out for herself because I'm tired of giving this girl advice because right. she's not listening to my advice. And I wasn't, and, and I just couldn't. I just needed to figure it out on my own as a grown woman that's what i had to do but it was never any love lost mm -hmm. um with that scenario like i can still call tip anytime i need and i know that he'll make the phone call if i need a phone call to be made and right. that, he's a very loyal person All right, so if tip came to give you advice now of course he's your business partner he still gives me advice so do you listen are, are you no, listening sometimes to him i don't sometimes i don't i think it's just like with any of your friends yeah. you know what i mean it just depends you're bullheaded yeah, as women I'm as bosses in this industry, yeah very I you're know. a cancer right no i'm a gemini Gemini. oh golly That's yes <laughs> i'm an aquarius so we're kind of like on the same yeah, wavelength we understand each other yeah aries aquarius and gemini yes. yeah yeah you know, I try to listen to his advice. I try to listen to anybody's advice who's more experienced than me in the industry. And, of course, who wishes me well and only yeah. wants the best. But sometimes you just have to bump your own head against the wall. Yeah. And that was how it was for me last year. So yeah. I'd like to think that I could avoid that in future. But, who, like, you know, who knows? Who knows? Because you are a Gemini, honey. Yeah, I so, just can't. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it is what so learning about the industry and what you know about it now, the negatives, the positives, yeah. the ups and downs, would you would you take that and go back to just being regular Iggy with the normal life and not having to put on makeup and you know if I could if take you could it take back, it back would I would you um do? you know what I asked myself that question a lot last year which is kind of why I took a bit of a hiatus and really took my time yeah. making this album because I wasn't sure and I just wanted to be able to let things settle down especially in the media and you know like I have people camped li literally living outside my fence waiting yeah. for me to go places so it took a while before I think those people lost interest and I was able to actually like live a more normal mm. life and go around to the grocery store and not have, you know do all that and really kind of make the decision do would I prefer this or the chaos of the music industry and of course I think we know what my choice was because mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with you today mm -hmm. I just love to make music. Like I think it's so much fun, and I really enjoy it and feel passionate about it. So, if I'm going to make music, it's going to be my job. Um, mm -hmm. And I just felt like sitting at home. I watched as much reality TV I as I could that. possibly watch. I know. I had seen. I watched every movie on iTunes. Like mm -hmm. I had sat out by the pool every day of <laughs> summer that I could possibly do. And it's kind of like, all right, well, you know what? what do I do now? Yeah. This is what I'm passionate about. I naturally want to call my friends up and do this stuff and hang out and be in the studio. And I still have this great platform and I still have a lot of people that want to listen to my music. Mm -hmm. And I this can this is still able to be a, a job for me if I want it to, so why not? Because mm -hmm. I just don't want to live in a world where I'm not able to like have creativity. And right. I like to do that with music. Yeah, and I know you said you had to take a break for, you know, 
background. And I know in some interviews you talked about the suicide situation, about you know how you yeah, kind of contemplated, how you contemplated, it. and it's so it's so prevalent, you know, right now in our society. So I just thought with you touching on that, that was just something, something that was very important that needed to be expressed from a, a public figure as yourself. Yeah, I agree. It's tough as it's a public tough. figure to, yeah. I think, admit. Um, that you're like a human or that you can be touched in a negative way and right. affected. You always want to pretend like there's kind of like no water getting in your ship. And I think for me last year, that like tough exterior almost kind of worked to be detrimental to me because people thought, well, she doesn't care about what's going on. Or, she's mm. not affected by this. She doesn't care. Look, look how she's acting. Mm. And actually I, I really did care and it really did hurt me, but I didn't want people to see me hurt. Mm -hmm. about it and so I think in a way it made me even more like I wasn't a human being mm -hmm. and so it was important for me having that realization to come out and share my story but also try not to seem like I don't you know you never want to seem like you're trying to be the victim of the no, scenario but, you, just, sympathy, but you have but to be transparent yeah about exactly it, I think it's know? important people still see that the, the people whose music they yeah. listen to or those right. people they look up to and or see on Instagram and see this amazing great life that yeah. everybody's still human everybody still has their good and bad days no matter how much money you're earning right. or how much attention you get yeah. it's the same human experience for everybody right for so, so for someone who was going through something as such and you know I know in my experiences I've, I've experienced people who you know took their own lives suicide yep. and it's like oh my god I didn't know that you were going through this like I just talked to you the other day and you didn't express to me that you were feeling this way like how do you feel do you feel isolated when you're going through yeah that? And you're if definitely you do, isolated it's funny because one of my friends Demi Lovato has also spoken uh, up about yeah. this before and she said to me after I said it in the interview she was like why didn't you tell me and I was like you would have ruined my plans oh my goodness <laughs> but it's see? messed up but that's the way that you think when you feel that way you know you don't want to when you're thinking about it and you're not sure if you yeah. want to or not, you don't want to tell anybody because then you know they'll try to help you and ruin your terrible plan. Oh it's messed goodness. up, but it's true. Yeah. So you don't say anything. And I don't know, yeah, so I didn't say anything either. I didn't say anything to anybody besides Nick, of course. Yeah. I spoke to him about it, uh, and he helped me a lot about with that but I just didn't want to tell anybody and for them to like freak out or yeah prevent me from my plan if that's yeah. what I wanted to do it's really sick to say that but it's yeah, true it's how yeah because a lot of people think, think that a, pe a lot of people yeah. think that so what advice do you have anybody who's looking and listening right now and they're contemplating doing something like this what type of advice would you have for them you know what, I think I'd just say, like, it's a re life is a really long marathon to run. Oh, my God. And sometimes mm. you feel like, well, I'm sitting here every day, and every day it's not getting better. Every day is the same thing. But you have to look at it, kind of put it in perspective, especially mm. in this, like, social media area where... Mm. Uh, era where we're like we almost have ADHD and we expect everything <laughs> to change yeah. and that yeah. timeline to update and we we get in a scenario where everything's moving so fast yeah. we expect our life to move that fast as well or for mm. us to be able to overcome things mm. that quickly and it's just not human nature life is a very long race to have to run it's a, it's uh, a marathon, it, it, exactly yeah. it's a marathon like it's like a triathlon mm -hmm. so you know i say take it day by day but also don't expect taking it day by day to be something that can just take a month or two like mm -hmm. sometimes it does it might take you a year mm -hmm. for you to get out of that season yeah. but it's just i just would try to get to the next day just make my plan for what the next day is going to be and know the pendulum will swing and the talk other way. to at least one person yeah one person or take up a hobby yeah. I always say is really important I, I've spoken a lot about taking up horseback riding that's mm -hmm. something that I like to do because trying not to fall off a horse <laughs> makes you not have any uh, ability to think about anything right. else and so you can all those negative thoughts were able to leave me mm -hmm. when I was doing that but I think especially as like adults or when you find your passion and then you're mm -hmm. able to make that your job mm -hmm. suddenly you're left without a hobby or something that you can just do and not have other people's judgment of if you're performing well whether it be publicly right. or just performing well at your job if your boss thinks you're doing good if you're getting the promotion and I think it's important to just have something that has really nothing to do with your like success financially mm -hmm. or as a career move like 
I think it's important as adults we find something that we can do to take our mind off of those sorts of things so that yes, when we do have those like down times or yeah. bad s seasons of life, there's something else that you know you can just do and, and put all your energy into. Right, right. Now I know you, you, I know you are so tired of people asking you about your, you know, your fiance, Nick yeah. Young. I know you're tired, but <laughs> I wouldn't be doing my job if I did not ask yeah, it for okay. my fans here. It's okay. Because because, but you know what? You said what a lot of us women think when our man mess up. Like, I'm going to cut your penis mm -hmm. off if you keep messing with me. <laughs> like, yeah. you said it. Like, we, we, yes, said, we say it, but you said it publicly. Yeah, so, I honey, that is so true. I know. Like, and then after everything yesterday, I was like, you are so lucky that I'm on the other side of the country because you're like, you're dumb. Why did they do that? Uh, if what? I was here in this house with you. <laughs> I don't know. Why? I don't know. I mean, I like to think that it's just humans will be humans. I oh my try not to put it all on men. That can't be the uh, answer. I know, Iggy. but I don't know. I mean, I know I can control myself, so I don't know. It's tough. Oh, my goodness. So what, what was his excuse of saying, like, why he did it? Or was it, was it... Honestly, I haven't even really, like, had the opportunity to sit down and really have that conversation because I'm out here working yeah. and it's um he's on the road they're playing with the team so it's not really something that like you want to call up your fiance and he's on the bus with his teammates and you're like figuring out like which fork in the road you're going down so I'm just kind of trying to not really like let my energy get spent on that when there's there's really no solution Girl, that can happen you, right now. I you, just have to wait till I get yeah, home. Yeah, you're a good one. You know what I mean? You're I gotta wait till I get home. <laughs> I need to collect my thoughts uh -huh. and we can, I don't know which way that's gonna like that. sway, but we can, t I'll, I'll talk about it with him. Yeah, I, I like that I, because, Yeah. hey, I need some of that energy because me, I'm, I'm gonna put all that bad energy out on you you gonna have a bad, <laughs> the whole team gonna feel it. See, that you me, are going to lose a couple of games. With me, I got to, well, <laughs> yeah, I have to still go to work. So then if I'm putting that out there and then it's coming back in my phone and I'm getting all involved well, yeah. in this and, you know what I mean? So I just don't, I feel like that, I have to be selfish too. And I don't have the luxury to be able to indulge in that kind of thing this it. week. Okay. Maybe this next week. week. Okay. But like next week, week you'll have time for, but this week I ain't got time. Yeah, for next it. week I got time for for my for, my, for the craziness, uh -huh. my crazy ways. But this week I gotta play it cool. So.